Hello everyone, it's John Elder again with another service video for you. Today we're going to be talking about how to safely power up a control package, either a wall mounted package like you have here, or if your package is mounted in the hood in the utility cabinet, doesn't matter. So follow some of these safe precautions, you should be able to safely power up and minimize the possibility of damaging equipment. Be sure to follow all safe work practices, especially the use of PPE. All circuits should be de-energized prior to any wiring or service. Remember, many of our controls will have more than one circuit that will need to be turned off. After de-energizing the circuit, verify that the circuit is dead, then lock out and tag the breaker. Let's start by looking at an example of a hood control package. Every job is custom built, so variations are almost endless, but there are some common components which we will review today. In every control package, you'll find an HMI and a circuit board. The HMI is typically located on the front of the exhaust hood, but in some cases it may be mounted on the door of the control package. If needed, the HMI can be mounted in a two-gang box on the wall for better access. Other common components may include contactors, variable frequency drives, cellular modules, relays, and power supplies. The key to truly understanding the control package is by referring to the wiring diagram attached to the door. This diagram is not a typical diagram, but rather it's specific to the job and is invaluable to making sure that everything gets wired correctly. Let me take a moment to explain how the diagram reads because it's slightly different than most. I call this a point-to-point -point diagram because it shows you wiring from the power source to the terminal in the control package or from the control package to the switch, fan, or component. For example, Here's the wiring for an exhaust fan being controlled by a VFD. You see here, the high voltage wiring comes from the breaker in the building's breaker panel to terminals L1, L2, and L3 in the control package. These terminals are located here. Then, if you look at the wiring diagram again, you see the high voltage wire from the VFD to the exhaust fan, or from terminals U1, V1, W1 located here to the disconnect on the fan. The remainder of the diagram reads the same. Solid lines are factory wired for you and dashed lines will require field wiring. One specific note on wiring EC motors to our circuit board is note that the P-terminals shown here are polarity sensitive. So double check this before applying power. Reversing polarity will damage the terminals. Okay, so once you understand how to read the wiring diagram, go ahead and complete all the field wiring to all the components that are needed but don't apply power. There's a few things we need to do to this control package to set it up so that you can safely apply power. If you follow these precautions, it's gonna save you a lot of headaches if, if by chance something got miswired. So first, if your control package has VFDs, what you wanna do is we wanna unplug these dis quick disconnects here. This is the load power from the VFD to the fan. What this does, is it protects the VFD should you get it miswired. If you mix up line and load here, when you turn on the breaker, it's going to short the VFD instantly. It's going to have to be replaced. With these quick disconnects unplugged, when you turn on the breaker, one of two things is going to happen. Either the VFD is going to power up normally. At that point, you know you have everything right. You can plug these back in, you're good to go. Or when you turn on the breaker, if the VFD do not power up as expected, then you know you have line and load backwards. And this needs to be corrected before you can go any further. So turn the breaker off correct this wiring, and then with these unplugged, turn the breaker on just to be sure. Again, we're saving these VFDs from shorting out. Once you've verified that all wiring is correct, you can apply power to the control package. Here are a few situations that you may observe once power is applied and you try to run the fans. First, if you power up the circuit board but do not power up the VFDs, the HMI will show you a Modbus communication fault. That simply means that the circuit board can't see the VFD because it's not powered up and able to communicate. If you have a fan mounted VFD, it will have to be powered up and a Cat5 communication cable run from the control package in order to communicate. Another common issue that comes up happens when you try to run the fan for the first time. You may receive a Modbus fault number eight, which is an overload fault. The first thing to check is fan rotation. Fan rotation must be verified visually because if backwards, the fan will still move air in the correct direction, but it'll only move half as much and the amp draw will be considerably higher. To change rotation, swap any two legs of power between the VFD and the fan. If rotation is correct, 
the overload is more than likely because the fan has not been balanced and are simply running too fast. Another issue you may see is when the HMI reads fire and the exhaust fans are running. The most common issue is that the fire system microswitch has not been wired to the terminals C1 and AR1 or was wired normally open rather than normally closed. The last most common issue is the HMI showing missing temp sensors. This simply means that the circuit board has been programmed for a specific number of temp sensors and is not detecting all of them. Verify all your sensors got wired to the T terminals. Again, the wiring diagram will show you the number of sensors required for your specific job. Now that you have more information on how to safely start up a control package, I hope your install will be less troublesome and less stressful. If you have any questions on this product or any of our products, feel free to call or email. Thanks for watching.